Hello, my name is Leo Blevins. Welcome to Mysteries and Histories. Uh, in this episode here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell the story of exactly what Oswald did that day in that, snip, in that sniper's nest. Excuse me. Now, as you heard the expression, an image tells us a thousand words. Okay, an image tells us a story. When you place and you look at these images and you place everything back in its location and you study this location, you do get a lot of information and it tells you more of what Oswald did in these locations. Okay, especially when you put the testimonies in and with it and they line up to what we see in the films and images. When you piece all this information together, we can actually uncover a story now of what Oswald did that day in the sniper's nest. Now, first, it's been reported that there was Oswald and a few other people up on the sixth floor of the Texas School Book Depository. At the time, when it hit 12 o'clock, everybody was going downstairs to the second floor lunchroom. They was all getting on the elevator. Well, Oswald stopped. He says, you know, could you send the elevator back up to me? And everybody agreed to it. So they went downstairs. They got to the second floor. As they got second floor, they sent the elevator back up to Oswald. Now, the type of elevator they had was, as soon as the elevator is pushed to a certain floor, the elevator will go up. The doors will automatically open up by themselves. Okay, and they'll stay open until someone closes them and then move the elevator. Well, at 12 o'clock, the uh, elevator, the service elevator, was on the sixth floor of Tech School Book Depository, went down to the second floor, then went back up to the sixth floor. This is at 12.30 now. I mean, at 12 o'clock. They send the elevator back up to Oswald. So at that point, at 12 o'clock, the freight elevator there was on the sixth floor of the Texas School Book Depository. Now, Oswald went home that night, okay, and he brought a bag in with him the next day, which is verified by the guy who even took him into there and went to work that morning. This is the bag right here. This is the bag they found here, which Oswald say, stated that he had curtain rods with him. When Everybody didn't think, you know, curtain rods being in a big bag like that. You can just carry curtain rods around without being in the bag. Oswald went home to get the curtain rods. Here's the reason why. He went home to get his rifle that he had hidden at Ruth Payne's house. Now, there was already a rifle that he probably took in there weeks before when he started working there. Okay, because he was working on the sixth floor for a while. Okay, and he picked the location. And he hit a rifle, he hit one rifle up in the box, okay? So, like I said, once you put all this information back, you can uncover the story. And then when he went to Ruth Payne's house, he picked up the other rifle. Mostly, I think, was the rifle that he used because the car can rifle was already placed in the box up here, okay? The car can rifle was already placed here because the car can rifle was a decoy rifle, which I'm about to reveal why it was a decoy rifle. Okay, he already had a rifle up there because we can see this is not a fresh crack. It was already made for a while there. Okay, and then we know he had a pry uh, bar. This is not the image right here. We know he had a pry bar sitting right here on the window sill, as you see right here. And this lines up to the two markings on the piece of wood that's going across the top there. Right here, as you see here. See the dent mark right there? That's where... It was shoved in and then pried apart. Okay. And he had done it twice because there's two of them right here. There's one here and there's one prime mark here. There's one prime mark here. He had to do that so completely get a strip of wood right there. He already placed a rifle there some time ago. He went to Ruth Payne's house, got the other rifle, came back with it, opened this up. After everybody went down to the second floor and Oswald was the only one left, they sent the elevator back up. So no one is going to come up on the elevator. He knew this because no one's going to come back on the elevator because as soon as the elevator hits that sixth floor, it's going to open up. So there ain't going to be no elevator on the sixth floor coming up. He knew there wasn't nobody coming up steps because everybody's getting ready to go outside to see the parade, you know, JFK and all of them coming down. Oswald was the only one left. So he goes ahead at this point from 12 o'clock. He goes ahead, opens this back up, 
takes the decor rifle out, set the bag over there beside, right here, which I'm going to pull this up right here, sets the bag right here for now, or against the wall, grab, goes up here, grabs the decoy rifle, walks around to the other side of the building, which is right here, to the other side of the building, places the decoy rifle here, that's why the rifle itself was never fired. They even proved that the, that rifle was never fired, and the rifle was set for a left-handed person. Oswald places the rifle here, slides the box over it and stuff like that. That's all the reason why they only found Oswald's palm print on it. Place the clip, excuse me, I got holes in my mouth. Place the clip over here in plain view so someone will spot it. Okay, he set this up. Put the rifle here, set the uh, clip for the rifle over here in plain view so they know to look in this location where they'll find a rifle because they needed the rifle close to an exit location here. So they'll think that the assassin went down this road, you know, down the stairwells here. This was the decoy rifle that Oswald set up. Okay, he set the decoy rifle there, set the clip over there. So they'll think that the exit that the assassin took went down the stairwell there. He ordered a car cannon rifle under A. Heidel. So when they go look for it, they're looking for a person called A. Heidel now to own this rifle. And this is the exit he took right here. This is very well planned. Then Oswald walks back. Okay, walks back. Places a box here, places a box here, places another box here, sets down right here, takes out his rifle, takes the bag, you know, opens up the bag, takes out his rifle, assembles the rifle, puts the bag right down, back right in the location right here. Box he's sitting on right here. He grabs his, takes his hand, he takes his right hand, places it on the side box, moves himself over a little, okay? This is why he has a palm imprint right here. Place this so he can move over a little bit, just on himself. Then the box right here, which was not angled right, so he places his right hand, I mean his left hand here, which puts his left palm print right here. Takes his right index finger, because they found his right index finger right here on the side of the box. He pushes that box over a little bit, grabs his rifle, and then he starts taking aim. After he took his two shots, Okay, he took the first shot, which was a dead shot because they keep the bullet in the chamber. Took the dead shot, and that's where we have that one. That's where we have three bullet cases, and only two was actually fired right here. So he took that uh, chamber out. This is why the bullet was also in a different location as well because he took that bullet out, and he had the two live rounds right here. This is the ones he took. He took his shots after he took the first shot. Reload and took a second shot, which he has six seconds in between both shots. He took them shots. He gets up, steps over the box, place one foot right here, one foot right here, place the rifle back into the box, take the piece of wood, put it back over it. And this is why we have a picture image of him, which is in here. I'll probably put it back in probably it's in here and this is why we see him in this window right here because he just got done replacing the rifle up in this box area here that's behind these bricks here there's an empty box there this is why Oswald is seen over in this window over here because he just got done replacing his rifle up in this area right here the box which I'll point out right here Then what Oswald did, after he took his shot, hid the rifle, replaced the wood back, he gets down, walks around, over to the elevator, gets on the elevator, rides the elevator down to the second floor, gets out, walks around, and stands right, and goes through the door right here, and stands in front of the Coke machine, and buys him a Coke. As you see here, we see... This is the cook machine he was standing in front of. The door right here is the door, and there's the elevator right behind this wall here. From this point to this point here, this is one elevator that's in the hallway there. This point to this point is the elevator that comes down the second floor to this hallway here, and all Oswald had to do is step off the elevator, walk around, and he's right in front of the cook machine, as we see here. 
Here's another image that we can see. Here's a cook machine. Right there's the door. Right there's the door. See this pane right here? Right there's a the door. On the other side of this cook machine and stuff was the elevator. Now, after the assassination, both, after the assassination, both elevators were found on the sixth floor. As you see, here's one elevator here that goes to this opening here. One elevator here goes to this little hallway here, which you got a door room here. It goes over here. And then we have the lunch room and lunch break right here. So see, when we piece all this together, we can get more information on how Oswald took place. Now we know the story because we place all this information back in and we can follow Oswald's steps. Now, as you see here, there was two shots only came in from the right and actually the left as you watch my videos. Okay, that was the two shots of fire here because even there's a butt plate of an imprint of a rifle even in the box itself here as well. So Oswald probably pushed down on that as he was getting the rifle out, stepping down. He ran up there, grabbed it. So see, when you put this information back together and you start looking at it, now we know this police story and this is how Oswald was sitting when he took his shots. Okay, how he was aiming from different angles. Now we know the story and here's the story. Oswald went to work that morning. Okay, he started stacking boxes up here first. He started stacking these boxes here. He didn't put these boxes in place yet. Okay, because you had half an hour from the time everybody went downstairs at 12 o'clock. Uh, I'll say a week or two weeks before. Let's start here. A week or a week, two weeks before, Oswald had already brought a rifle in. Okay, he already had it assembled. Okay, he brought it in, went to that window there, placed the rifle in there, cleaned it all up, placed a the rifle there, set it in a the box there. Placed it back, kept this right here. That's why we had the pry mark here, the pry bar here. Left it there because he already knew that a couple weeks or so he's going to assassinate JFK. Went back home that night, grabbed his other rifle that he used in the assassination because it was at Ruth Payne's house. Brought it back to work that morning, hid it for a while. Then, when everybody went down at 12 o'clock, everybody's going down to the sixth, uh, to the second floor lunchroom. Oswald asked him to send the elevator back up. They sent the elevator back up. When everybody left, Oswald went ahead, came around, got the rifle out of the, um, over the window there, the box over the window. He took that rifle out. He opened up, set the piece of wood down, took out the rifle, cleaned it up, walked over to the stairwell, Cleaned up real good. That's why he only had his palm print on there. Place the rifle here. Slide the box over top of it. Place the clip over here out in plain view so they can find it and discover it. So they know the location. So they know that the assassin went down the stairwell there. Went back over to, like a pointer right here. Let me show this. He placed the rifle down here. Slide this box over. Slide this box over. Slide this box over. So he hid the rifle there. When he placed money clip, I mean a, a bullet clip over here. Plain view so they could know where the rifle was at. Went back over to the sniper's nest. Sat down, placed a box here, placed another box here, another box here. Sat down, took the rifle out, assembled it all together and stuff. As he has it up, pops open that chamber. That's why the one bullet casing flies over to take out the bullet that was already in there because a lot of people carry a bullet in their chamber. Pops it out. That thing flies off. That's why it's over here. Then he loads it back up, sets his hand over there, puts it over this way, just that box over, grab the rifle, and starts getting ready to take his aim. Takes his two shots. After he takes his two shots, he gets up, walks over to the side here, over the boxes, walks over them, places one foot here, steps up, places the other foot there, places the rifle back in there, Take the piece of wood, push it back up in there, got back down because the bullet clip was right here. And we can see this. This bullet clip was right here because we can see a dent mark in the wood itself. And then that bullet spun out and flew, hit right here at the sidewall, hit this box, flew over here. That bullet casing did. So when he stepped down, he stepped on that bullet casing and it flew and it went back around this way. That's why it's more separated because remember when he's sitting over here, 
He opened up that chamber because he knew that bull was there. He opened up that chamber. It pops out. It flies and hits over in here. Then when he takes the two shots, we got a shot here and then a shot here. He gets up, puts one foot here, one foot here, puts a rifle back up in the box, close the box back up, steps back down, the bullet flips over and hits here. Then Oswald walks over to the elevator, gets on the elevator, takes the elevator down, steps out of the elevator, walks through the door, and then stands in front of the Coke machine. Now, a lot of people says, well, you know, wait a minute, he was seen 90 seconds after the last shot. But as I point out, there was 13 shots. So see, uh, when we look at the time frames and stuff, we're going to look at the shot to, uh, the first shot to JFK. That was shot number one. That shot struck JFK in the back because of the stroke. That was taken by Oswald. Shot number five was also taken by Oswald, but that struck the back of JFK's head after it was already exploded. Open. The bullet then passed through JFK, the opening of JFK's head and struck the inside of the windshield. Now, that was shot number five. Okay. Now we still have eight more shots after shot number five. Eight more shots. Now they said they seen Oswald 90 seconds after the last shot. 90 seconds after that shot. But Oswald still had eight, there were still eight shots being fired as he was hiding his rifle and heading down to the Coke machine. Okay, so he, there was another eight shots fired as he was doing all this. He was walking over, because you figure, he's over here. We're gonna say this is the top floor. He's over here, he takes two shots, place the rifle back up in there, and that's why we see in the Dillard image, we see him looking out this window over here because he just got done replacing the rifle up there. and. Closing it up, stepping down, hits that bullet, it bounces around, spins around, and then he gets out and he starts walking straight down this way, over to the elevator, gets on the elevator, takes the elevator down, gets off the elevator right here on the second floor behind the lunchroom, walks out, walks through the door, and he's standing right in front of the coke machine. During that time, there was eight other shots being fired. So you see, nine now, if you look at 90 seconds after the last shot, which was a uh, side on the street post, on the lamppost there, Okay, we're pointing at, as I told people in my other video, we're looking at a two minute window, two minute to three minute a window right there because of the time frame. Okay, like I said, no one in that day had stop watches to actually stop and say, okay, now go. You know, you got 90 seconds to get to this location because the officer that got off the motorcycle, fight his way through, the, excuse me, fight his way through the crowd, then through that little uh, opening there and then to the other door, just look around in front of the manager, says, can you take me to the rooftop after he founds them? They go over the elevator, push the button, but the elevator come down. So then they decide to go up the steps, and then they see Oswald. That takes a longer time because, remember, you got people running in and out and everything else. you got to walk around people and everything else. You know, it's a pretty nice-sized building. So for them, even coming to here where the door is down on the first floor, they have to come in through that little opening. Then he's got to look around right here for the manager. To take them up to the rooftop, and then they got to walk, fight their way through all the crowds and the peoples and everything else to go to the elevators. And all the elevators are there because both elevators are on the second floor. Then they decide to take the stairwell and they have to run up the steps and everything else. So, see, by placing photographic evidence in there, by placing everything back in its location, we can get more of the story. Uh, people went down to the lunchroom at 12 o'clock. Oswald says, send the elevator back up. They did. The elevator back goes up, so he knows there ain't nobody coming up the elevator. He walks over, takes the rifle out, cleans it up, goes around the other side of the building, puts the rifle down, hides it, puts the clip out in plain open by the stairwell, walks back up, sets the two boxes up, sets down, put his rifle together, move the boxes, adjust the boxes a little bit, adjust himself a little bit, take his two shots, gets up, places the rifle back above the box, Place the wood back into the box, gets down, steps on one of the bullet casings, it flips over, walks around, comes back to the elevator, take the elevator down to the second floor lunchroom, walks out of the elevator, walk through the door, stand right in front of the coke machine. That's why he wasn't out of breath. So see, we have the story now what Oswald did and what took place in that sniper's nest on the sixth floor of the Texas School Book Depository. We can find this information. We know the story now because of the information that we find in the photographic evidence, placing everything back, and lining up the testimonies with what we see, and everything fits.
right there perfectly. Oswald also had eight shots fired after he took his last shot that day too. Oswald took two shots a day from this location. I got another video I'm going to be making here soon on the story and the layout of the assassination. Don't forget to tell your friends about us. Don't forget to hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. Pass this video on. Share this video with family and friends. Post it on YouTube. I mean, not on YouTube. Excuse me. Post it on your social medias like Twitter, Facebook, or any other one, Vine or anything. Let everybody know this information. Thank you and have a pleasant, pleasant day.